Welcome back everybody. So I think this video is probably going to post the same day uh, I posted the inventory video, but it is a new day. This was all done today uh, and I'm posting the video this this evening. And I just kind of wanted to get this one out here because I ran into some uh, some more drama. So I've got both my spars out and the very first thing I'm doing is marking down uh, which one's going to be left, right, top, bottom, inboard, outboard. And at this point, I didn't realize, and I was on the phone with some expert advice there from Chris for some unrelated stuff to those spar markings, but uh, didn't realize at that point that there is definitively a left and right spar. I didn't really think about it, and they appear to be identical, but there are some subtle differences, and that's going to come to play here in a little bit. But I knew which side was forward, uh, which side had to be top and bottom, so I got it all marked out. So now the first thing you have to do is a whole lot of countersinking, uh, initially just for the fuel tanks, but then there's other nut plates for inspection covers, and then every one of those other holes is going to get countersunk for either a rivet that's going to sit flush in there that holds a nut plate or slightly below flush so that the skin can fit over it. So... I have decided that I would prefer to do all of that all at once. I don't want to try and do it while the spar is mounted horizontally with a hand drill. I have a drill press. I wanted to try and figure out a way to use it. I had this idea a while back of putting it between my benches like I do the the uh, dimpling frame. So the first part of this was me getting that all set up. And now I'm just testing the countersink cage with the number 8 countersink. And I'm just creeping up on the dimensions. So for this countersink, I want it to be flush, and then I want to go seven clicks or seven thousandths past flush. That way it sits, uh, when the skin's in there, it sits down nicely. And I had a skin coupon to test it with to make sure I had it right. So went ahead, got that all set up, got the drill press and the vise, or the, the bench all set up, everything's clamped together. You can't see it, but there's two long clamps holding the benches together, so none of that is going to move. And now my grand plan is to do all of the number eight screw holes that hold the fuel tanks on first. Uh, these are the biggest, scariest ones that I'm going to do. I wanted to just do it and get it over with. And it went surprisingly quick. I think I timed it. It took me about seven minutes to do both sides. Went back, checked them periodically, made sure the screws were sitting down in there like they were supposed to, and uh, worked out well. The spare set of hands was very helpful. Tiff was holding the spar up while I was making sure the countersink cage didn't spin as it went down onto the spar. I didn't want to mar it up. Uh, we also figured out pretty quick that a piece of tape right there on that joint keeps the metal shavings from getting in there, so it'll make cleanup a lot easier. So I did one spar, and now I'm doing the other one. Again, these are just the number eight holes right now, but uh, as Chris said, and you saw me referencing his videos a few times, and I appreciate the shout-out today, uh, there's like 1,100 holes that need to be countersunk in that spar. So there's a live-action shot of me actually doing the work. I wanted to get as much of this done and prepped as I could. So we got them done, and now we're going to move on to the other nut plates, which are on the bottom of the spar for the bottom of the skin for the inspection panels. They're number six nut plates, and there's, I think, three inspection covers with four holes each. Um, and I'm just final size drilling those holes right now because, uh, well, my pilot bit won't fit in there, and my... Uh, the screw that's supposed to go in there doesn't fit right now, so I'm just taking the appropriate drill bit and final size drilling those holes. So everything's prepped and ready to go. Cleaning up from the previous mess, and I'm going to get the number six countersink out and get ready to go, but we're looking at where they go checking the plans, make sure I understand it's, you know, it's pretty obvious which ones are the nut plates, so it's not too hard to mess them up.
and uh, we're going to make a discovery here in a second. So I'm grabbing the left spar first, and we're going to try the left spar. And it just hit me, and we're looking at it. I don't have a left spar. I have two right spars. And the way we no noticed originally is because the holes for those nut plates that are on the inspection covers that are supposed to be on the bottom end up on the top of the left spar, or what we thought was the left spar. And that's not right. And if I wanted to put them on the bottom, they'd have to be on the right, which means I got two right spars. There's another way to tell, too, that we figured out after the fact. And again, it'd be nice if the directions actually said this, because it tells you to mark them, but it doesn't tell you what to look for. And the spars are not marked themselves. Um, but there is a taper, and you'll see a picture here in just a, a minute, at the bottom of the spar that denotes the bottom side. So yeah, throwing my arms up. Not sure what to do. I have two right spars. I have to get a hold of Vans on Monday and see how they want to proceed with this. So I'm just continuing with the right one because, well, I have two rights. I can't, can't go wrong. So I've done the number six nut plates. I'm just finishing countersinking those. I'll do, uh, I'll get those all done, and then I'm going to go ahead and move on to all of the, all of the hundreds of number 40 holes that are on that spar. And I'm only doing half of it today because uh, even with the drill press, it gets old. I'll do the other half in the morning and then hopefully get to riveting nut plates on. But, uh, show you here in just a few more seconds. Yep, just finishing up those number sixes. So those are done, and there you go. You can see that taper at the bottom. Well, it should be on the opposite side on one of those. And since they match, uh, they're both right spars. Not much I can do about that. So we decided to put it away in the crate. Maybe we'll need that crate again. Maybe we won't. Um, again, it's up to Vans. i got to see what they want to do about this. That's obviously not going to be a cheap part to uh, replace. Uh, it's not going to be cheap to ship, so I, I don't know what they're going to want to do. Anyhow, we're prepping for the number 40 holes that just hold the skin on. I'm sure I should probably match drill these with the skin. Um, I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference because they're all pre-drilled anyways. So I went ahead and drilled them out, and I'm countersinking them now so that they're all done. The goal is once this thing is up in the wing stands, I don't want to have to go along horizontally and countersink hundreds and hundreds of holes. I think they're going to come out much nicer this way. I could be wrong. At this point, I have a spare spar if I'm not right. So uh, This took much, much longer because there's a lot more holes. I trimmed a lot of it out for you. But you'll see here in the end, and I ended up missing two of the middle ones that I went back and got. But you'll see it in this final picture. But yeah, uh, progress is underway on the uh, wings, albeit the right wing only because I'm missing key parts for the left one now. Anyways, there's going to be one last shot showing what they all kind of look like down the spar. And then hopefully I'll get one more video out tomorrow before I go showing nut plates getting put on. But there you go. Leave the questions below and I'll see you on the next one.